Honorable Senators, I rise today to speak to the second reading of Bill C-5, an act to amend the Criminal Code and the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. Honorable Senators, yesterday I complimented the Prime Minister and the Minister of Justice for introducing the Mandatory Minimum Bill. I want to share with you a bit of history of mandatory minimum for, for, uh, penalties from, from my experience. In 1992, when the mandatory minimum sentencing bills were first put in place, in the, in the legal profession, we thought it was a temporary measure. And sad, sadly, for many of us, successive governments have continued to impose mandatory minimum sentences. To date, we have 73 minimum penalties. That is why, honorable senators, I believe the Justice Minister and Senator Gold, the sponsor of the bill, are very courageous to have taken this first step toward repealing mandatory minimum penalties. I genuinely believe this is a very big step. Over the years, even before I came to the Senate, I used to get into discussions with former liberal justice ministers to stop the imposing of mandatory minimum sentences and to repeal them. They found it politically difficult to repeal mini minimum mandatory penalty bills. Senators, since I have been in the Senate, I have introduced the following bills to get rid of mandatory minimum penalties. In June 2013, I introduced Bill S-221, an act to amend the criminal code exception to mandatory minimum sentences for manslaughter and criminal negligence causing death. In November 2013, I introduced Bill S-209, the same name. In February 2014, I once again introduced Bill S-214 with the same name. I've introduced three bills, the last one in 2014. I table these bills because I truly believe that the mandatory minimum penalties do not work. As a lawyer, I used to see that it really destroyed my clients, my family, and I believe in the long run society. Indeed, traditionally before 1992, when a person is determined to plead guilty, the judge is then asked, tasked with looking at sentencing principles. And he has to ask the following questions. What is the act that is applicable? What crime was committed? How severe was the crime? What are the circumstances of the individual? In Canada, Section 718.1 and 718.2 of our criminal code are very clear. 718.1 stipulates that a sentence be proportionate to the gravity of the offense and the degree of the responsibility of the offender. 7.1.2 follows by outlining some of the other principles to be followed in sentencing, as well as aggravating and mitigating circumstances to be considered in deter determining a sentence. One of the most important factors that justices are tasked with considering who has committed the crime and what factors may have contributed to the criminality and then to look at the circumstances of the person appearing before them. With regard to proportional sentencing, Section 718.1 of the Criminal Code sets it out as a fundamental principle of sentencing, which directs that all sentences must be proportional to the gravity of the offense and the degree of the responsibility. In other words, a sentence must accurately reflect the circumstances of a particular crime. Mandatory minimum sentences handcuffs judges and limits their discretion and their ability to determine appropriate and proportional sentences. In Canada at the moment, we have 73 mandatory minimum penalties, 67 of them which are in the criminal code, while six are in the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. To date, at least 53 mandatory minimum penalties have been struck down by the courts found to be a violation of our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, or called into question by the provincial and territorial courts, as well as the Supreme Court of Canada, our country's highest court. Of those 53, 10 have been included among the 20 in Bill S-5. The leader, Senator Gold, yesterday spoke articulately about discretion of judges and proportional sentencing. 
And over the years, many of us have spoken about judicial discretion and why it's important, so I will not dwell on it now. The fact is that if we trust our judges to do their job, and by the way, we have the best judges in the world, then we should trust them with sentencing the person in front of them. If we trust our judges to do their job, and then we should trust them with having the discretion which allows them to do their job to the best of their ability and with direct relation to the facts and the individual circumstances of any case before them. In following with this sentiment, the Cent Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights in the other place heard from a majority of witnesses that all mandatory mi minimum penalties should be repealed. Experts from all manner of experience, perspective, and expertise reached consensus. Mandatory minimum penalties and the sentences they carry are predetermined by parliamentarians without knowing the exact circumstances of the case. Members in the other place and senators are determining the fate of countless people in Canada without even having to look at a particular person in front of them, without having to hear their story, without having to look them in their eyes and confr confront their humanity. Instead, parliamentarians are predetermining their fate and are putting aside time-proven sentencing principles. In doing so, we are only putting aside coveted sentencing principles on which foundation of our criminal code is built. Instead, we are wholly ignoring them. Today, I just want to explain to you a situation the best way I can. The exact numbers may be a little, uh, a little may need a little bit more work, and, but, and we can do that in the committee. But I want to give you the bigger picture. There at a moment, as I've said a number of times, 73 total mandatory minimum penalties in the criminal code and control drugs and substances. Various levels of courts across the country have struck down 53 mandatory minimum penalties, including appellate courts and Supreme Court of Canada. As the judges see the person in front of them, and they impose the penalty that fits the crime, and not what us parliamentarians have decided many years ago, without seeing the eyes of the person standing in front of the judge. The government has introduced Bill C-5 to repeal 20 mandatory minimum penalties. And this bill includes 10 of the mandatory minimum sentences that have been struck down by the judiciary. Now, Senators, I want to repeat this again. I'm sure the Justice Department might be, department might be able to give us better figures. But my purpose to share this with you is to make sure that we understand that as us parliamentarians have created a patchwork across the country that is inconsistent. For example, if my appellate court in British Columbia strikes down a mandatory minimum penalty, it will be applied in British Columbia, but it will stay in force in the rest of the country, unlike... Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Senators. I'm really sorry. Unlike if a mandatory minimum penalty is struck down by the Supreme Court of Canada or the Government of Canada. I want to say this again, Senators. We have now ended up with a patchwork. And at committee and at third reading, we are going to have to find a way of addressing the patchwork. I agree with the leader, Senator Gold, that we can't shoot for the moon. All my life, I've been a political person, and I understand the realities of repealing mandatory minimum penalties. That's why, Senators, when the leader says we can't shoot for the moon, I get it. And this is why we at committee or at third re reading will have to deal with this patchwork in a creative way. I want to repeat, Senators, that in currently we have 73 minimum penalties in force in Canadian law, that the courts have struck down 53 of them and Bill C-5 repeals 20 mandatory minimum penalties. Among the 20 included in Bill C-5, 10 mandatory minimum penalties were struck down by the courts. I hope that we will be able to address this patchwork situation in committee. Thank you, Senators.